book Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden is something of a cult favorite among Western audiences. Its close attention to detail astounds its readers, as the beauty and art of the scenery and culture is described so deeply and carefully. Many have praised Golden for being able to write a book of a culture so alien to his own, praising the accuracy of the book. The novel was even adapted into a movie by Rob Marshall. However, there are a number of inaccuracies in the book. These inaccuracies are to be expected, but they reflect an underlying message that is a bit problematic. That is, Orientalism. Orientalism is described as an, an exaggeration or exotification of practices in the East in a way that serves to reinforce the West's image of morality. It is not an outright mockery of the East, but rather a depiction of Asia as something fictional and fantastical, only existing in the minds of Europeans or Westerners. For example, the most common depiction of the East in a Westerner's mind, as well as in Western works, is that of ninjas, magical religions, and mysterious dragon ladies. And of course, this image is not complete without an oriental rift. These sorts of depiction lead to a mystification of the East and the belief that all Asian countries are the same. Their cultures and practices all interchangeable. Korea, China, Japan, all three merge into one big oriental fantasy land, in which all elements of historical, regional, and cultural differences are disregarded, a weird potluck of East Asian culture. For example, many do not know the difference between a kimono, a hanbok, and a hanfu, all different styles from different cultures, but in the eye of the West, they are all the same oriental dress. This is a bit lost under all the drama and tragedy of Memoirs of a Geisha, as the book is told in such a way that the reader truly believes it is true. It's done in an autobiographical style, and Japanese words are sprinkled all over, although they're often just wrong, to fascinate the reader with how exotic the book is. However, Golden gives himself away as he describes everything, from scenery to things as mundane as the bathroom, with a sort of awe and romanticization that exposes the fact that he is a foreigner. In fact, when asked for the Chinese characters of the name in the book for the Japanese translation, Golden revealed he had never put so much as a thought into it. Isn't it a bit odd that while he went on about the state of Japanese toilets in such detail and all, yet he still neglected to find the spelling of the names he used? This is the case of fictionalization of Asian culture to the point that it is no longer viewed as a reality. This is how Orientalism is shown in the book. While Golden clearly does have a substantial knowledge of Japanese culture, he depicts Geisha as a sort of mystical being that seduces naive and heartless Japanese men and get into dramatic catfights with each other over men and fame as though they were on a soap opera. The effect is the belief that geisha are prostitutes, the culture heartless and immoral. Reading the story, the Western reader experiences a sense of high morality and takes pity on the characters for their culture. The reader is made to gawk in awe at Japanese culture and its oddities, in turn feeling superior about their own. This is made evident in the book when the Japanese characters begin to interact with, Je with American soldiers. The American men are all lively and joyful, always ready to have a good time in turn making the Japanese seem bland and old-fashioned. Orientalism doesn't stop at the work it produces. It affects the world at a deeper level. When all anyone sees of Asia is a fantasy world of romanticized and dramatized Asia, who keep quiet and serve only to entertain men, there is a belief that this is reflective of East Asian culture as a whole, and in turn, East Asian people. Exotification of the culture leads to the thought that East Asians are alien, submissive, and weak. And due to the recent surge in the West's obsession with the East, these stereotypes are deeply ingrained into the Western mind. A book on Japanese culture, written by a non-Japanese man, should not be treated as an accurate telling of the culture, and one should always seek the truth before making assumptions about culture and tradition.